Hello and welcome back to a third video of the Webflow course. Today we're going to learn about Flex, CSS Grid and adaptive layout using media queries. So we have this layout right here and we would like to use the best practices for our design system for our website so that it can be as reusable as possible. So one of the rules for reusable elements is to avoid using margins and padding as much as possible because a text, for example, that has margin of 30 on each side, well, if you're gonna reuse that text class, then it's also gonna have margin, but not every single layout needs those margins. So I'm going to remove these margins, first of all, and the same for the heading, instead of having 30, I'm gonna set it to zero. And you're going to be asking, well, Mang, this is kind of broken. We actually wanted to have those margins. Well, that's where uh, a grid layout is going to come in. A grid layout is going to allow you to have gaps. And that's really useful in this kind of, of situation. We're going to select the content block. So this is what contains the actual layout for the content right here. And by default, it's using the block element. The block element is simply a rectangle that takes the full width and has a bunch of elements inside that stack together in very inconsistent ways. So it can go to the right or it can go to the bottom uh, depending on the size of your container. But the CSS grid as well as the flex has harsher rules, which is better at the same time. It's also better for adaptiveness because flex and grid can have fraction units and percentage units. And uh, unless you explicitly wrap, so having elements going to the second line and third line, um, it's just gonna work as expected and it's perfect for adaptiveness. Now, again, if you don't understand, uh, don't worry, we're gonna demonstrate all these concepts. The first thing I wanna show you is for the content block, we are going to use grid instead of block. So I'm gonna click on the third icon called grid. Now, when you have grid, you can set multiple elements. You can set as many columns as you want, as many rows as you want, and you can be pretty explicit about that. In this case, I actually don't want to use a gallery layout. I just want to be able to use the gap feature, which is really, really useful. And this is specific to grid. So if I just want to have a basic layout, I can just remove the second column. So here one fraction means it's a dynamic value based on the number of columns. If we have two columns, one fraction means 50%. If we have three columns, one fraction means 33%. If I remove the second column by clicking on the trash icon, then I have one fraction, which is equal to 100%. And you can decide to have as many columns as you want and as many rows as you want. Right now, the rows are auto, so it's going to automatically fit as many rows as you want. For the gap, we have columns gap, so the gap between the columns, and then we have rows gap, which is between the rows, and that's exactly what we want to use. So we're going to use 30 for the rows, and that's going to replace those margins that we had initially. And by doing so, we can not have those margins specifically to each element or classes. Another thing to notice about the grid is that you're going to have these alignments. By default, it's going to align by stretching everything both horizontally and vertically. But you can decide to center or to go to the left and it's going to apply all the elements inside. And that's really useful for example, if you want to align vertically, which is impossible using block, it's a lot of trouble. So it's just much better to use either CSS Grid or Flexbox because they have these features. Um, the other thing is, see how by default it's just stretching the button. And if I just align to the left, then it does not necessarily take the whole width. Um, this can be useful if you want to make everything very adaptive, but also it depends on your choice for the button. In this case, I don't want to take the full width. A lot of people are going to ask, well, what is the difference between flex and grid? 
What I can say is that Grids is definitely more for a gallery type of layout and you have to be pretty explicit in terms of how many columns that you want, uh, how many rows that you want and the gap uh, feature for example. And because it's a grid type of layout, you control both horizontally and vertically at the same time versus a flex layout you have to control one direction or the other. So it has the option to go horizontally or vertically. And they don't have the gap feature, so we're gonna have to use the margins or some other techniques, but it also has really good stuff, like you can wrap the elements if it goes beyond the size of the container. So that can be really useful for some layouts. We're gonna put this back to grid and we're going to use the flex in another context. So I'm going to select the content block and I'm going to add a div block. And this div block, again, by default is using a block, but I'm going to use a flex instead. And here I can just insert a bunch of logos from the design tools. As you can see in this layout, we have three logos next to each other and we're going to be using flex for that because it only needs to be spread horizontally. So I'm gonna come back and I'm going to insert, pressing A again, an image, and that image is going to be a logo. So we're gonna start with a sketch logo. We can insert more or I can just right click this and duplicate, just like in a design tool. So I'm gonna do that twice so now we have three images. At this point, I can just click on the settings and replace the image with the other two logos. So with this one and then the Figma logo. Like this. Now let's go back to our div block. And right now it's set to flex. We're gonna set the width to 100%. Then we're going to scroll back up and here we notice that for justify it's just set to start, which means that every single element is going to go to the left side. We can go to middle or to the right, but also we can have some very nice things like space between, which means that it's going to push one element to the far left, one to the far right and the other one to the middle so that we have some spacing between each and then uh, we can also center for each one so that they all take roughly the same amount of space but within those three boxes then you are centering the element it takes a bit of practice to get used to these things um, but i think space between does the best job for what we want to have and the width is a little bit too big so I'm gonna set instead of width 100% I'm gonna put it to 186 px and it's going to change automatically the unit to pixels. One thing that's beautiful about flex is that it's very flexible in terms of how many items that you want and you can just add more items. So for example if I was to duplicate this again it's going to ensure that based on the rules that I set up it's going to place all the items automatically for me versus the grid where I have to be explicit about the number of columns. In this case, I'm just going to delete one. Uh, so for the grid, I had to use caps. For the flex, I had to use the distribution, the way that is justified. I can use space between or space around. So those are different rules that you can get used to. And some of them are specific to either flex or CSS grid. Now let's practice a little bit more. Uh, we're going to change the layout for the purchase button. Right now we're using something that I don't recommend, which is using a padding for the top uh, to center our elements. What you can do is to use flex instead. So now by default, it's just spreading horizontally. We're going to set to vertical and remove the padding. So I'm going to go to padding and put reset and set to justify center. Why do we use flex instead of just a manual padding? Well, it's a lot more adaptive. So if your button gets bigger, then it's always going to center versus 
always sticking from the top. So this is very useful for a design system where elements have to be as adaptive as possible and as reusable as possible. Okay, so I want to show you another technique that is very common in CSS, which is to place elements in a three dimension way. So you want elements to float on top of each other. And that's going to be useful for this specific button where we have this purple rectangle that's kind of floating on top of the button. So inside purchase, I'm going to add a div block. When I do this, notice that flex consider this to have a physical size and it's going to apply the same for any element unless you apply this as a position absolute. Position absolute means that it's going to float and it's not going to take any physical size on the same plane as these main elements that don't have position absolute. Think of it as cars moving in a tunnel. If you use X and Y position, which is without the position absolute, it's just going to go stack together. But imagine using position absolute as if you were adding a new tunnel on top of that first tunnel. So now we're floating and it's no longer taking the same physical space as the other tunnel. So the goal for this new block is to align to the left. And so we're going to try to look at the positioning of our absolute and we need to set the left position to zero. Like this, it goes to the left. But by default, it's going to position against the entire canvas of our website. If you want to be positioning against a container, then that container is going to have a property position instead of static, relative. And voila, we can now set the styling for that box. We're going to set it to a size. Make sure to select div block two. And the width is going to be 64 by 32. We're going to set a background color to purple using this code. And we're going to have a border radius of 10 and then add an icon inside. I'm going to choose image to icon card, which is this one. Set the width to auto. Don't tile from the left middle. And we're going to add some custom padding from the left to 34 px for pixels. And voila. For this box, we want to move it a little bit to the left, floating on top. And since we're using position absolute, we can do exactly that. So we're going to go back to the position properties. And instead of setting to left zero, we're going to set to left minus 15. Great. So if we compare that to the design, it's almost exactly the same. The last thing I want to show you today is how to do media queries, because now we need to make this adaptive. If you click on tablet, you're going to see a bunch of issues. And these are easy to fix because we're using flex, we're using container. So let's start with the tablet. Here, the layout is pretty much perfect, to be honest. So I can just go and fix the background because that's the only element that needs to be fixed. So I'm going to select the hero container. And here I have two backgrounds. I noticed that the first background can move a little bit to the right and the second background a lot more. So I'm going to go to the first background. Instead of 50%, I'm going to set to 44%. So that's a lot better. And for the second background, instead of 100%, I'm going to set to 70%. Let me exit this and explain a little bit. So when I click on tablet, all of the blue properties are now orange. So let me go back to desktop and you're going to see that these are blue, but in tablet, this is orange. As I explained previously, orange means that they're inherited. So all of these devices that are smaller are using the same values as the one that are bigger. So whenever I apply these 
customizations to tablet, it's also going to apply to mobile landscape and mobile portrait, but will not apply to desktop. Just to prove it to you, when I change the positioning of the backgrounds, now it just reverts back when I go to desktop. But here, it has those changes, and for the smaller ones, it also has those changes. So that's one important thing to note. Now let's customize mobile landscape. Here we're noticing that we're missing some margins from the left. So I'm gonna go to container and in the container, I can put padding from the left to 20. And I'm going to do the same for padding from the right. As soon as you do that, this container, which used to be a default container, has become a class. And that means that it contains those customizations for the media queries, but also anything else that we customize. Let's move the background a little bit for the first background. So I'm gonna go to hero. For background one, instead of 44, I'm gonna put 40. The other thing I can do is to center everything. So normally we have the phone, but maybe we wanna put the phone at the bottom instead. So we have all of this space for nothing. So we're gonna center the content. We're gonna to go to container and instead of using a block element, we're gonna use a flex element. And thanks to flex, we can justify all the elements and center it like this. Now the last media query is the mobile portrait. For mobile, we can go to the content block and make that width that we have for 320 to smaller, like 280. And this is going to cover cases like the iPhone SE and small Android devices. On top of that, some texts are just too big for mobile. In this case, we use 140 and instead we can be using 120. The same for the subtitle, so the main heading. Instead of setting it to 32, we can put it to 28. So again, the text span is the one that controls the big 1000 text, and we set it to 120, and the whole thing, so the whole H1, is set to 28. Awesome. So now we have a layout that is completely adaptive for different mobile devices and desktop as well. We can publish this and just test this on an actual browser. So clicking on this here, I can just resize and I can see the layout is adapting beautifully across the board. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and learn a lot about flex, grid, as well as absolute positioning and then media queries. I'm going to include really good resources to flex and grid techniques. Of course, we're gonna have the chance to practice on more layouts. In the next session, we're going to learn how to create a navigation with the logo and menus, and then it's going to adapt to a hamburger menu. It's going to use components, which comes for free, and you don't have to set up much. So I hope to see you in the next session.